It's Wednesday, August 12th, 2009. You're watching the Morning Swim Show. I'm your host, Peter Bush, and we are back on world record pace. After a day off from rewriting the record books, can you believe it? A whole day without a world record? Well, we knew it was too good to last. The latest record came from Down Under. We'll tell you about all that, plus we'll recap the second day of swimming at the USA Swimming Junior Nationals. In a big interview today, we'll talk to the new king of open water swimming, Germany's Thomas Lures. First, that whole world record thing. At the Australian Short Course Nationals, Jessica Shipper clipped a few hundredths of a second off Libby Trickett's 100 fly record with a 55.68. Also swimming fast in the finals on Wednesday night were Ashley Delaney, who set a Commonwealth record in the men's two back with a 149.62, and Chris Wright, who, run, who won the two fly with a 151.11. Finishing second in the 200 fly was Nick Darcy, who's back in the pool after being denied a spot on the world championship team this year after the court accepted his guilty plea of assaulting a fellow swimmer in 2008. Darcy's time in the two fly, 151.40. Back here in the States, the USA Swimming Junior Nationals rolls on, and Missy Franklin of the Colorado Stars was the big swimmer in Tuesday's finals. As you can see in this footage from Swim Network, Franklin dropped a second and a half off her seed time in the 100 free to win with a 54.03. The 14-year-old is now the sixth fastest American ever in the event. Franklin was one of the youngest swimmers at the Olympic trials last year, where she finished 37th in the 100 with a 56.14. Her time last night would have tied her for second with Amanda Weir at the World Championship trials. And we'll find out what she can do in the 50 on Friday. Let's not forget the second place finisher in that event, Leah Neal, who's also 14 years old and has experience from the Olympic trials last year. And last night, Neal swam a 55-00, which was a best time by more than a second. Franklin won two more events on Tuesday. She took the two back at 209-16 and helped the Stars 400 free relay win on the strength of her 54-30 split. Kyle Whitaker swam alone in the 200 fly on Monday night. was far ahead of the field again in the 400 IM Tuesday night. His winning time, 4.17.59, five seconds ahead of second place. You can check out a full recap of Tuesday's swims on our website, swimmingworld.com. And our thanks to Swim Network uh, for the footage from Junior Nationals. The USA Diving National Championships began Tuesday in Tallahassee, Florida, with the prelims of the 3-meter and 10-meter synchro events. First medals will be awarded today in the women's 1-meter springboard final. Some of the medalists from World Championships are on the roster to compete this week, including 3-meter silver medalist Troy Dumay. You can watch the finals live by going to usadiving.org. And that's our news for today. After this quick break, we'll talk to open water swimmer Thomas Lures. There's a reason for the sunshine sky And there's a reason why I'm feeling so high Must be the season You get more power and more space The world gets fewer smog-forming emissions The third generation Prius It's harmony between man, nature, and machine And welcome back to the show. Well, if there's an undisputed open water swimming champion in the world right now, it's Thomas Lures. And we have him on the phone right now from a city in Germany that I can't pronounce, so we'll just say he's in Germany. Thomas, how you doing? No, thanks. Fine. Perfect. So uh, you won the 5K and the 10K in back-to-back -back days in Rome. That's a brutal turnaround. Yeah, right. It was really hard after the 5K to recover for the 10K. But uh, every swimmer who swam the 5K swam also the 10, so we had the same conditions, but I think I made it really well. So what do you think about what happened with the American swimmer Fran Crippen, how he kind of had that controversial finish? Yeah, right. Uh, perfect swim from both U.S. swimmers, of course. Second and third place was really good. I personally had a little bit luck that Fran Crippen at the finish swam at the boy. So he loses some meters, and I could uh, swim away in the front. So for me, it was good and the luck. Sometimes you need this, but it was 
a hard race and a really good performance from the U.S. swimmers, of course. You've been doing this a long time. Has that ever happened to you where you, you kind of took a different course than the other swimmers and then so close to the finish you had to sort of rejoin the pack? Uh, no, not really. Sometimes I had a uh, little bit problems with some waves. In the finish in Melbourne in 2007, I had uh, the experience in the 10K that uh, I swam with Vladimir Diacin together, and he catched a wave uh, a little bit better than me, and so I lost the race. And, uh, and this time I had a little bit more luck that uh, Frank Cribben swam against the boy, and uh, for me it was good. <laughs> what, was, uh, what were the racing conditions like? in Italy and um, I mean you swim in so many different elements lakes rivers oceans I mean how would you describe what it was like in Rome it was hard conditions it was in the sea the water was warm but really choppy water the waves were big so it was hard to swim the 5 and the 10k especially the 10 so it was really rough Hey, this, um, this swimming has sort of been dominated lately by talk of the high-tech swimsuits and how they will soon be banned from the sport. First of all, is it the same in open water, just so that we know? Mm, I would say, if I, when I look at the results, that nearly the same swimmers who won the years before or make good places in front are also making now the good places. I think in open water it's a little bit different because the suit is also a protection against jellyfishes, cold water, or the sun. I think, and also it's good for the sport that new companies come in, like Blue 70, and support the open water sport. And for the future, I think it's good. But I think it's different to the, to the pool, of course. So you think it, it might be an even more difficult transition in open water swimming if you have to go back to the days before, you know, kind of full body, high tech suits? Yeah, I, my personal opinion is uh, that in open water it, is, it should be better if we can swim with the normal suits, like we had before uh, February 2008. I think this would be a good solution because really in open water I had many races with jellyfishes and I was at this time I was happy that I had a suit and I think it's okay. All right, Thomas, so what's, uh, what's the next stop for you? Do you get a little break now or right back in the water? No, right back in the water directly after the Worlds in Rome. I swam the, the World Cup Series, the FINA World Cup Series. I swam last weekend in Bulgaria the race and uh, on next Wednesday in France the next World Cup. And I will try to make a good result in the overall ranking this year in the World Cup. So I will go to New York to swim this race. So there will be a next many races next time, 10K races. Do you ever take a break, Thomas? <laughs> yeah, after the Olympics. Of course, I made a big break, and I started in December training, so now I feel really good. And I hope that the shape was what, what I had in Rome. I could make in the next races also good results. Well, I hope you have some fun traveling around the world, swimming in thanks. some lakes, and uh, best of luck to you. Thanks a lot. All right, thanks. That's uh, Thomas right. Lors joining us on the phone from Germany. We appreciate his time, and that is our show for today. We'll be back tomorrow. Until, until then, I'm Peter Bush reminding you, keep your head down at the finish.